안녕하세요 여러분. Today, Ace will be showing you his favorite blurs in Adobe After Effects. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support Ace, you can become a patron and join the Discord using the links below. Comment below what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Hey guys, Ace here, and today we're going to be going in depth on some of my favorite blurs in Adobe After Effects. I've been getting a lot of questions on how I do them, so I figured I'd show you my favorites and um, show you some of the settings in there. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but maybe you'll learn some new things, maybe not, but let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first one you're seeing is called BCC Lens Blur. Um, it's probably my favorite out of the bunch just because of how easy it is and how much you can do with it. Um, let me go ahead and click on the adjustment layer here and we, we can look at what the, um, the settings are. So in BCC Lens Blur, we have this value that's called iris scale. Now this is the amount of blur, so changing this will obviously decrease or increase the amount of blur. And then the scale will change sort of like the shape of the uh, lens here, uh, increasing that. I don't know, I don't normally do that, but I'm just showing you what's in here. Uh, so gamma, so this is very important. The gamma is kind of like how much bokeh is gonna show up. So if I decrease this down, you can see that the highlighted areas are no, aren't as prominent, so increasing this will do the opposite, make it more prominent. I don't go too high with this value because if you do, um, some scenes will start to artifact and the colors will start to do these really, really crazy things. So I don't normally go above like, like 500, um, but yeah, it's kind of up to you. Um, so down here we have the iris. Um, iris shape is the kind of the shape of the bouquet. So changing this, I'm gonna change it to three sides. You'll see all the bouquet change to triangular. And then you can change the uh, rotation of it as well. So if you wanted to animate this, you could do that. Um, you know, there's all these different number of sides you can do. Six is usually the best. I mean, it's default, but it looks nice. And then the um, bokeh right here, changing this value, will actually change the bokeh itself. So if I decrease this, you'll see that the highlighted areas that are um, that are being bokehed are being affected by this value. Um, so you can do some really interesting things with that. So we also have this value called bokeh shading, which changing this will kind of change, um, do some more unique things with the um, the bokeh lights. So let me change these back to zero. So next we have the noise tab, and in here you can change the um, the noise inside the bokeh lights. So increasing the intensity, and then you can change, let me up the scale, or change the scale so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's basically what it sounds like. If you ever use fractal noise, it's basically what's happening inside the uh, lights. So you can, you can adjust that to your liking there. Let um, me go ahead and control Z this. And then next we have the highlights and this is basically what it sounds like. Boosting the highlights will make the highlighted parts just brighter. So when you blur it and um, animate it, those highlighted parts will get brighter whenever it's blurring. And that's pretty much it. You got the threshold here to adjust that, that um, highlighted uh, sensitivity, but that's pretty much it for um, BCC lens blur. Let me go and hop in our camera lens blur, which is a built-in effect in After Effects. So as you can see, camera lens blur does almost the same thing. The only problem I have with this effect is that it actually takes a little bit longer to render than BCC lens blur. BCC, everything BCC usually works a lot better. It's nicer to work with. But let me go ahead and hop in and I'll show you guys how to use it. So it's the settings are pretty similar. Um, you got the shape here of the... Um, of the bokeh so changing that will change the uh, shape of the bokeh same thing there and the roundness um, you can make the bokeh more round you can um, change the aspect ratio and make it um, like wider there we go and we also have the rotation same thing and in our highlight tab we have the gain which is like um, it's kind of like the boost setting in um, BCC so Decreasing this will make the the highlighted parts less prominent. And then the threshold here was is how sensitive this gain is. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for the lens blurs. Let's go and hop into our directional blur comp and I'll show you guys how to use that one. So first I figured I'd show you this without any effects so you can see the difference here. Uh, directional blur is something that's really subtle but can add a little something to your cuts. So this is with nothing on it. And then I'm going to turn on BCC directional blur. And let's see what this looks like. Open up these keyframes. So it's not a whole lot um, with the directional blur. Sometimes I'll add like my own manual shake or a slide to help the um, direction out. But let's look at these settings and um, I'll show you what you need to change. 
So in here we have the blur amount, pretty straightforward, but the, um, the angle of the blur is what's important. So let me go to a frame right here so you can see. And um, changing this angle, let's say we go to 90 degrees. Doing 90 degrees would be good for a horizontal slide. If you're sliding and you want um, the scenes to kind of blur and they'll, they'll um, transition well together. So there's that. And then we have this value called the thinness, which is kind of like the, um, it's how the, the layers is, is um, overlaid on top of each other. So increasing this will make the distance between those overlaid layers um, greater. So I uh, keep that on zero. I don't never turn that up. But that's um that's really all there is. Spread is kind of similar, but it kind of spreads the blurred scenes over a greater distance. Um, kind of hard to explain, but I don't mess with that either. Um, not me personally, anyway. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you want to increase the threshold, you can do that, but that will just make the blur less noticeable. So um, that's all I have for BCC. And then the uh, built-in version in uh, After Effects is called just directional blur. So let me turn this one off. Turn this one on. And this one's even more simplified because directional blur is so straightforward. Um, but one thing I do want to note with um, the built-in version of directional blur is um, that when turning, when you start turning up the blur length here, um, just like we do with the BCC version, it will start to do this kind of black fringing thing, which I really don't like. It's a huge pet peeve. Oops, I mean to do that. Um, so that's why I, I always stick with the BCC versions because there's always it always seems to work better and you can you can um, add motion tile to this to negate that but you know when you have BCC why why do that you know so yeah that's a fix but just use BCC if you have the option okay and lastly we have Gaussian blur Gaussian blur is great for creating shadows I use this for um, text and any sort of um, you know motion graphic element that I'm adding to a scene, I need a shadow on it. Um, and I need to create a manual shadow. I always, always, always use Gaussian blur and it's pretty straightforward. So like, let me turn that one off. So this is the shadow here. It's just Gaussian blur with the horizontal blur turned up. And um, there's the um, BCC Gaussian blur and there's also the Gaussian blur built into After Effects. They do basically the exact same thing. So whichever one you have, use that one. And then um, I was gonna say that uh, if I'm blurring text, I don't, I don't use lens blur. I don't put lens blur straight on the layer. I always use Gaussian blur if I need to blur the text because it'll do this, which is fine. And if I use lens blur for something like this, let me show you. So here it is with uh, lens blur on. Um, it's, it looks okay by itself, but when you have stuff going on in a scene, it looks off-putting in my opinion. So I always stick with Gaussian blur on the actual text, and then if I'm blurring an entire scene, I'll use lens blur, which kind of makes sense because, you know, you want the lens to blur. That's kind of how light is coming into the this camera. So, and one thing I forgot to note is that you can use um, drop shadow for something like this. If you're using text or even masking out a character, you can use drop shadow to create your own shadow. So that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. Those are the three most versatile blurs and obviously BCC lens blur you're, you're going to see everywhere because it's it just looks so nice. But um. Yeah, leave a like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe if you really enjoyed, and check out the links down below, and I'll see you guys next time.